All right. And we know who Jesus is. Let's sing it one more time for everybody. Ready? We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy all right, Brother Byron's going to be preaching. They're going to be singing back there. We're going to have classes this morning. Miss class first. All right, we're going, everybody with Miss Vicky, where is she at? Uh, you're going to your class first, her class first, the smaller ones, all you little kids. Go ahead. All right, play the music now, and they're ready. Little kids, let's go. All you little ones. Yes. Amen. Let's give a big hand this morning. Everybody give a big hand. Somebody said, all them kids just come to get a present. And that's probably true, Lot. But let's pray they get the present they didn't come looking for. The gift of God, which is eternal life. Oh, I think somebody... We'll have to do it like this, y'all. All right, let's try this. Uh, what are we singing? Uh, uh, this, to the tune of Jingle Bells, right? Okay, they got a little song to you. They, uh, they got some work. And they're going to sing it called uh, Be It Born. Uh, All right, let's go, ready? He is born, he is born, Jesus Christ is born. Mary, time to celebrate that Jesus Christ is born.
him a big hand there. I was going to sing y'all one since Christmas Eve, ain't many people here. Call police, got me now. It's not nice. <laughs> you want to hear the rest of it? All right, let's uh, go ahead and have our ushers come. We're going to take up our offering this morning. And uh, I just hope everybody's having a great Christmas. We already have had. Uh... You hear me talk about the bus ministry a lot? And that's why. If just one out of 30 sticks, and it's real too, and their life changed permanently, it's worth every penny, every dollar. Them, them girls, listen, I'm, was everybody busy yesterday? Listen, Miss Blanca and them worked all week on their job and stayed out all day yesterday. You say, well, I'm too busy. I am too, but we did it anyway. And you know what? God honored that this morning. God honor that. You don't have time. You make time. Nobody has time. You make it. Even if you have to shift some things, cut off here and cut off there. And I appreciate our bus ministry. And as we go into the next year, I hope that we can go it bigger and better than ever before and just get some, get some people to God while we still have a chance. That's all that matters. Thank you, bus workers. Thank you. I'm telling you, uh, I, I couldn't believe Miss Blanca had, I don't know what their final count was, they had 68 on the bus. And then a bunch of some drove in, so they had over 70 on Brother John's bus this morning. And then Miss Vicky had nearly 60. And uh, it, it's, just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Thank God for you. If you, you can help financially, you can help by praying, you can help by getting your bus license, becoming a bus driver. You, you put your life where it counts, y'all. Invest some time in these kids, and the Lord will bless you for it, okay? All right, let's all stand. We're going to give our offering this morning. I hope that you'll give and honor the Lord today. Um, we've had some folks send some uh, gifts uh, for bus kids. Now, actually, uh, from good night, way up in New Jersey and Alabama and uh, Illinois and places like that that watch our services on YouTube. And so let's everybody give and do your part this morning. Remember that gift I told you. Put him first in your life. So let's everybody give today, and he'll bless you. We're going to be spending a lot of money this week on winter camp, and so I hope that you'll uh, become a part of this, okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you were born as a baby in a manger. God manifest in flesh. We pray now that you would bless this offering this morning. Let it be just what you want it to be. Have your way in our lives. We love you and do a great miracle here this morning in every heart. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody give now. Let's open the Bible to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. While you're turning to your scripture there this morning, uh, remember now that uh, uh, we will be having a regular service here Wednesday night for you that are not staying at the camp. If you, I want you to be here and support the church. Everybody do what the, we're support the church. If you're staying at the camp, now we'll be having services there. But everybody else needs to be here for a regular Wednesday night service. Then we'd like, if anybody wants to come over Thursday night, Friday night, we're going to be having a great time looking for a big time in the Lord uh, Thursday night and Friday night. There's the directions. It's nothing but about 15 minutes from here. And um, 
We're looking forward to it. Uh, we're excited about it. Got a big crowd coming. It's going to be fun. So if you want to go to a revival Thursday night or Friday night, uh, you're welcome to come. Uh, we might have some surprise guests, actually. So um, don't forget that. Now, uh, Matthew chapter 2, I want to read a little bit again of this story. Matthew chapter 2. Here it says in verse 1, Now when Jesus was born, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born? There it is again. He's born, king of the Jews. We have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and, priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor which shall rule my people Israel. Now, um, I'll stop right there because it mentioned here in this scripture most of what I want to mention today. And I want to just preach a simple thought why Jesus was born. I mentioned some of these things Sunday night at the play, but I'm going to mention them in detail this morning just for a few minutes. Why was Jesus born? The birth of of the Lord Jesus Christ was more than a sweet little baby in a manger story. As a matter of fact, it wasn't a sweet little manger. You see manger scenes set up and you almost think, you know, that the sheep, they look so fluffy, like they smell good, and the, the camels and sheep, you think, how sweet. You, you, you ever been to a real barn where real sheep, they don't look like that. Uh, they're dirty and got mud and everything else and their wool and nasty and stink. It was a dirty, stinking stable. And yet God's Son came and was born in that little manger there in Bethlehem. And the Bible said that he was came to this earth. There's never been nobody else like him. Jesus Christ is above everybody else as a mountain is a molehill as a skyscraper over is a little a dollhouse, as an elephant over a fly, as a bulldozer over a little toy car, as the sun is over a flickering candle, that's how high Jesus Christ is compared to every other person in this world being born. They say right now there's 7 billion people on this earth, or right at it. A billion is a thousand million. So one billion is one thousand million. A million is a thousand thousand. So a thousand thousand is one million, and a thousand of those millions is a billion. And there's seven billion people on the planet right now. Probably, I'm guessing, there's more people alive on the world right now than there has all through history all put together. Probably all put together might have been around nine, I'm guessing but I'm probably pretty close. Nine billion people have walked on this planet and only one of them changed the whole world like he did. Out of all them people, from every race, every nation, every tribe, every kindred in the whole history of the world, only one changed. You, he divides history, B.C. and A.D. from the time he came. Every atheist in Hollywood, when they... Uh, signed there a check has his birthday on it. Mm, what about that? Every, every scientist who tries to disprove his word and teaches and preaches evolution has to write down his birth. When they write, uh, how old are you? I was born da 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 19 something, 19 something. Has to write down his birthday uh, to tell when they were born. Isn't that something? Nobody's ever had the effect on this planet like that one baby boy, Jesus Christ. One man said, well, how, if he, was he God? Yeah, he was God. Well, was God laid in a manger? Yes, he was. Was God still in heaven? Yes, he was. There's God the Father in heaven. 
There's God the Son laying in the manger and God the Holy Spirit was moving and came upon him at his baptism. There's three in one and one in three and the one in the middle died for me. There's no only one God manifest himself in three persons. The only way you can understand that is accept and believe what God said and is spiritually discerned. The only, you know the only way you're ever going to understand the Bible is know the author and get your heart right with God. Then he opened the scripture to you. It's not by your education or your intellect or your IQ. You understand the Bible because of getting your heart right with God. Then the Bible starts making sense. So we're going to look at his birth this morning. Number one, why did Jesus come in the manger? Number one, to fulfill the scripture. To fulfill all of that Old Testament scripture. Some people don't realize the emphasis that God puts on his word being fulfilled. He said not one jot, not one tittle that would pass from the law till all be fulfilled. It is impossible for one word of that Old Testament not to be fulfilled. You'll listen carefully now. All right, we're listening carefully to fulfill the scripture. Let me give you a few of them this morning. This will interest you. Isaiah 7 and verse 14 said, A virgin shall conceive. That was 700 years before it happened. Before Mary he was even born or knew who Joseph was, the prophet Isaiah wrote that a virgin would conceive. Here's Isaiah. Now, personally, I believe this. A lot of people don't believe this, but I personally believe that a lot of times those Old Testament prophets probably didn't even realize what they were writing. I, I really believe that. I believe when Isaiah saw him on the cross in Isaiah 53, Isaiah didn't even know he was going to die on a cross. But the Holy Spirit moved him, and he writes. He said, where would that come from, Lord? A virgin shall conceive. Something got my hand there. And uh, that's what inspiration is. The Holy Ghost took a hold of the head, the heart, and the hand of those men. And they wrote, a virgin shall conceive. That had never happened before, and it ain't never happened since. Some of them claimed that, but were later found out to be lying. Uh, 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 Mary was a virgin. Now, there's a lot of talk about the virgin birth, and there's a lot of controversy about the virgin birth. I, I don't know why you might have a problem with that. If God could create the world out of nothing and make time, because there wasn't no time before he made time. And the day's going to come when there ain't going to be no time. If God can do all that, he has no problem allowing a virgin to have a baby. None whatsoever. Mary was a virgin. Now, some of them new Bibles change that in the Old Testament to a young woman. So they, there goes their chicken to go ahead and say virgin. But Mary was a virgin. You say, well, she was a young woman. Yeah, she was a young woman, but she was a virgin young woman. It is absolutely essential and necessary that Jesus did not have a human father. If he had a human father, he was a sinner like us and couldn't save nobody. But you get your blood from your daddy, right? Your blood. So his father was God. He had God's blood running in his veins. His mother was Mary. That set him apart from every person that's ever been on this planet. I'm glad to report to you. Somebody said, now, now that's impossible. One guy said, it's impossible that a baby could get here without a mother and a daddy. No, it's not. Adam and Eve got here without a mother or a daddy. I mean, they didn't even have a mother. Just bam, there they was. Uh, what's impossible with men is very possible with God. So that was 700 years. It was said it was conceived of the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ was not a new person created. He was a preexistent person incarnated. I'm going to say that again. Jesus Christ was an, a new person created. He didn't come into being at Bethlehem. He always was. He took a body at Bethlehem. He was a pre-existent person incarnated. That means God in flesh in Bethlehem's manger. His blood comes from the Father and he had God's blood inside of him. He was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver just like the Old Testament said. It was Bethlehem. Let me read you a little scripture here back out of the book of Micah. Thou, Bethlehem, though thou be little among the thousands, yet out of thee shall he come that's to rule my people Israel. Now think about that. Micah the prophet, hundreds of years before it happened, wrote. Now y'all thinking with me? 
It'd be like right now, it'd be like right now if I sat down and I wrote something. Now watch, I'm going to prophesy. There's going to be a man born in 2032 and his name's going to be uh, uh, John D. Hall. He'll be born in uh, Chicago, Illinois at the Mercy Hospital uh, at, at 4 o'clock in the evening on April the 13th and he's going to, and he's going to, and his mother's going to be a virgin. You think that's going to happen? No. You th- you, can you tell where somebody's going to be born 700 years? It'd be like if you put a map of the United States up there and there's thousands of little towns. Morganton, Hickory, Statesville, Winston-Salem, Charlotte, Marion, Rutherford, Shelby, Lenore, Boone, uh, across North, Asheville, all, all over the mountain. Thousands of towns. And I said, all right, I'm going to prophesy. And I took a dart and slung it backwards like that and hit Morganton. Hundreds of years before it happened and nailed it. That's what the Old Testament prophets did. When the Old Testament prophets, they weren't seers. They didn't have crystal balls. Buddy, they nailed it, son. They nailed it. When they said it, you could take it to the bank. Somebody said, well, I know a prophet, and he gets one. He said something was going to happen, and it did. Uh, that don't mean nothing. If you're really a prophet of God, brother, you don't miss it. And bang, 100%, home run. Every time they get up to bat, so the scriptures were fulfilled. Bethlehem, Bethlehem. The Messiah must have a birth. I mean, got to be born somewhere. And there were only three known continents at that time. Europe, Asia, and Africa. Now, those three continents had, um, as you know, Asia was chosen out of those three. Not Africa, not Europe, Asia, Asiatic. And uh, he was chosen there. Asia has many countries. Palestine was chosen. Palestine has three districts, Judea, uh, Galilee, and Samaria. Judea was chosen. Judea has many villages. And out of all them villages, Bethlehem was chosen. I mean, it'd be like choosing Nebo, brother, out of the whole country of the United States of America. I'm telling you today, hallelujah, Jesus was born to fulfill the Scriptures right on time. And I got good news for you this morning. If all them Scriptures were fulfilled at His first coming, you can count on it. All them other ones are going to be fulfilled at His second coming. He's coming back the next time. That's another subject. Number two. Number two, you know why Jesus was born? He was born to reveal the Father. For years and years and years, people had wondered, I wonder what God's like. I mean, there must be a God. There wasn't no atheist hardly back in them days. I mean, nobody's an atheist unless they've been taught that. Nobody's naturally an atheist. You have to be taught that. Somebody has to say, I don't believe there is a God and sound educated to educate you out of your natural faith. If you go into any country in the world this morning where they don't have a lot of education, they believe in God. You know what people say? Well, that's because they're ignorant. You know what we say? There's something wrong with education. (laughs) Amen? They got it backwards as usual. Nobody can look at this world and the universe and say it just got here all by itself. Uh Uh-uh. There is a God and Jesus came to reveal to us who that God is, and that's how we know God. If Jesus hadn't come down here and walked among us and go through what we go through and experience what we experience, how how would we even know God? How would we know what God's like if it were not for Jesus? I mean, somebody that can make a boiling furnace of about 10,000 degrees out there and 93 million miles from here and hang it in outer space, and it's called the sun, and it can burn this whole world up if it's a little closer. Somebody can make something like that. How are you going to have fellowship with him? I mean, what do we got in common? I mean, make millions of stars and and the planets and the universe, but I'm glad he chose uh, to reveal the Father to us, and he'd come down here and walk the shores of Galilee. He healed the blind. He raised the dead. He touched deaf ears. You see, that's God. God. You see, he was moved with compassion on the multitude. See, that's God. You see him weeping over the grave over Jerusalem. That's God. You see him heal blind Bartimaeus. That's God. You told him, he said, receive your sight. That's God. When, when he was hurting, that's the man, Jesus. When he was raised from the dead, that's God in Jesus. Jesus showed us who God is. I told you that story the other night. They said this man, this, this kid, uh, the man had been killed in the army or something. 
and they had a picture, a family picture on the wall. And there was daddy and the mama and the kids. And they sat down to eat Christmas dinner. And a little boy was crying. And his mama looked and said, son, why are you crying? He said, because I ain't getting what I really want for Christmas. And she said, what do you really want, honey? He said, I want daddy to step out of that picture and come down here and eat with us. And his daddy was gone. And I'm going to tell you something, people. That's exactly what the Lord did. We saw him all the way through the Old Testament. He stepped out of that and sat down here and eat with us. Hey, y'all, has that hit you lately? He came to reveal the Father. Thank God. He can reveal. You know how I know what he's like? Because the, he revealed the Father to us. I'm so thankful this morning that he revealed the Father. We know who Jesus is because of he revealed the Father. He revealed to us who the Father was. Peter the Great, they said, went out one time and he, and he dressed in beggar clothes. He's a, he's a prince king. And he went out door to door like an old man asking for help. And he said, he went out and they said, get out of here, you old beggar. Next time, get out of here, you old beggar. Next time, get out of here, you old beggar. And the next day, one man helped him. One old man let him in and was good to him. And the next day, the royal chariot pulled up to that man's house. And he said, get in. They said, why? What have I done? He said, you helped uh, Peter the Great and got him in and rode him off to the cha- uh, with the, in the chariot. And you know what that showed? He said, he didn't know who he was. He didn't know that's who he was. And that's the way Jesus came. The world knew him not. And I said, get out of here. I don't want him. Get out of here. Uh, right now, his name is a curse word in Hollywood. But you know what me and you do? We say, I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe you're who you said you was. And one of these days, the royal chariot am a fixing to pull out of here. And everybody up in here that's saved by the grace of God was going to ride that chariot out of this old world. Thank God, one of these blessed days. Ain't that going to be good? Now, I'm telling you this morning, that's why he came to reveal the Father to us, people. There ain't nothing in the world better than that. I'm going to take off on one of these. You don't believe this, do you? I'll, uh, if I get much happier, I'm going to take off on this little pink one right here. And, uh, <laughs> I might do a wheelie on it. I'm not going to do it yet. The spirit ain't right for that yet. Uh, I'm telling you tonight, this morning, hallelujah, he came to reveal the Father. Number three, right quick. I'm gonna let you go because you know you got Christmas dinner, hopefully. Number three, Jesus came to defeat the devil. Jesus came to defeat the devil. For years and years and years, the devil had people in bondage, had them in chains. People can get loose. You know, when you go around this world, it's sad to see how the devil's got people locked up, isn't it? It really is. I mean, uh, I I talked to somebody the other day. This man, he was cussing every breath. That's a flea market. And he was outside this. I was buying some apples. This man, he's out here just blankety, blank, blankety, blank, blankety. Had the dirtiest mouth. And he had the devil got in him. And, he, and his mouth got dirtier and dirtier. And I thought, I'm going to go witness to him. I'm going to go witness to him. I'm going to go witness to him. Because it's obvious. I mean, he wasn't just cussing. He was cussing, cussing. And, buddy, he, I, I said, I'm going to go witness to him. And by the time I got my apples paid for, he's gone. And I didn't see him. And lo and behold, I went over here to get some socks. And well, that's where I do my Christmas shopping. And I went over here to get some stuff. And I went out like this. And I came back, and here he come. I said, okay, Lord, thank you. You put him right here where I want him. And I just walked to him, and I said, hey. And he looked at me, and I said, you know, Jesus is your best friend, and he loves you. And he went, didn't say a word. I was ready to say, come on. You got something to say? No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I was not going to do that. But I said, I said, uh, you know the Lord loves you? And he just turned his head and walked off and didn't pay me no attention like I wasn't standing there. You know what? I felt sorry for him. I felt sorry for him. I visited a girl in the hospital not long ago. Her leg was busted open from there to there. Looked like, like raw hamburger meat because of drugs. Shoot dirty needles. Stuff going, trying to find a vein. And she couldn't even find veins to shoot the drugs in. Then filled them all up, you know, and was hunting them everywhere, a place to shoot them in. And now, you know what I could see? I could see it like a, a box, like a phone booth, and her locked up in them. That's the way the devil had her. Listen, if you're here this morning and the devil's got you on drugs, the devil's got you on, on alcohol, or something got a hold of you, and your life's all bound up, listen, I got good news this morning. He came to defeat the devil. 
The devil can't hold you when you run to Jesus Christ. He breaks every chain. He sets you free. He can get you out of prison. He can get you out of jail. Sin don't have no more dominion over you. You don't have to live a slave to sin. You don't have to be a slave to them drugs, Mom. You don't have to be a slave to them drugs, Daddy. You don't have to live your life in slave to lust and pornography and alcohol. And you don't have to let all that stuff control your life. I'm telling you this morning, He came to defeat the devil and get you free from all that stuff. Thank God this morning. It's not just red flowers and a Christmas present. He came to defeat the devil. I'm glad when he did his head on that cross, he said, it is finished. Satan has no more power. He came up swinging the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and he has the victory over the devil this morning. Everybody listen. To defeat the devil. They said this many years ago back when they was having them old feuds up in the mountains, like Catfield McCoy feud, a bunch of cattle farmhouses over there, and a bunch over there, and they was shooting at each other. And he's over here, bam, bam, bam. They was over here shooting back at them. War was on. And it happened, one of them girls had a, had a little baby, and that little baby got away from her mama and crawled out there up that driveway. And all of a sudden, somebody said, there's a baby. There's a baby. And somebody run out and said, cease fire. And that little baby, they said, it don't matter whose side it belongs to, we don't want to shoot that baby. And they all laid their guns down. So somebody got that little baby and got it out of the way. And you know, I thought about years and years, all these, all the devil's sins. And the devil had, the war was raging. And 2,000 years ago, a little baby came and made us lay down our arms and cease fire. Thank God Jesus came to defeat the devil. Lastly, and I'm through, Jesus came into this world, lastly, to save sinners. He come to save sinners. That's what he said. He said, I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. I read, heard a story the other day that broke my heart. It said this man uh, came in and uh, is having a revival. This man, listen to me, Man came down the aisle, tall. They said very good-looking man, maybe in his late thirties, early forties. And he come down the aisle, bawling his eyes out and holding his hand, just bawling like that. And the preacher met him, said, "Sir, are you all right?" He said, "No." He said, "Sin destroyed my life." He said, "Sin has destroyed my life." He said, "I'm ruined." He said, "Preacher." He said, I married a girl. He said, we was going to church and me and this girl got married. She was beautiful, had a beautiful wife, had three little boys. And he said, we was going to church and we was all serving God and everything was good in our family. We went to church on Sunday. We lived for the Lord every day. We had three little kids. I had a beautiful wife. We were making it good. And he said, preacher, I started messing around. And I got myself into something I had no business getting myself into. He said it wasn't long till I was laying in a motel every weekend drunk with different people. And he said, my, my wife, obviously she divorced me. And I lost my little, little kids. And he said, preacher, he said, just not long ago, my wife got into trouble. She got into a mess. She said, my wife took my three little boys and drowned them in the bathtub. And she said, they got her for murder. She got all messed up. My three little boys are out there in the grave this morning. My wife's in the penitentiary. And he said, it's all my fault. Every bit of it's my fault. He said, if I hadn't have got out and acted stupid and done stupid things, it would have never happened. If I'd have stayed in church and done right, my family would be together right now. Now I've got three kids laying in the graveyard. My wife's in prison. And I'm trying to get my, pick up the pieces. And he said, I have to live with that the rest of my life knowing it's my fault what happened to my family. And I thought about that's just one story. I... It breaks my heart now to see all the kids that are having to be raised by grandma or somebody 
because mom and daddy has let the devil mess up their life. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus was born to keep you out of junk like that. And I'm going to say this too. I'm not against, I'm not against rehab. I'm not against AA. All that stuff can do good. But I'm going to tell you the best, surest cure there is for addiction is getting your heart right with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it, listen, he's got a cure rate. The world, you say, well, I know a man that did it and he didn't like Maybe you did. That's the exception. If a man really gets right with God, you can quit anything. You hear me? He'll break the power of that sin in your life. My Lord, people, if he can make the world, he can help you quit drinking. Amen. Good night. I mean, if he, can, if he can make the world out of nothing, he can help you to, to, to lay down that drug or, that, or that, uh, that whatever that habit is. Turn that computer off, throw it in the lake or something. He can help you if you'll let him. He came to save sinners. He came to save sinners. You know Colonel Sanders, old the real, honest, the real Colonel Sanders, they said that old man made all that money with them restaurants. The first one was in Corbin, Kentucky. I've been there, actually. It's, it's a neat little place. They take you on a little tour, and it shows you the first Kentucky Fried Chicken. And, how you, and, I mean, he made billions of dollars. And when he was 78, nine years old, he started wanting peace. He didn't have no peace in his heart. He had money, had everything a person could want, but he didn't have no peace. When you lay down at night, everything just, all just, no peace. And he went to church. And they said he tried to do good and give money and try to straighten up and everything, and it didn't work. And finally, he went to church somewhere and somebody preached. And Colonel Sanders accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And he got saved, 79 years old. An old boy went to heaven, died and went to heaven. That's why Jesus came, for somebody like old Colonel Sanders, for somebody like old, that boy, got old Kirk Cameron was in Hollywood making movies and stuff, and he got saved. He got saved. Some of those movie stars I don't know about, but some of them really get the real thing and get right with God. That's why Jesus came. He came to save your daddy. He came to save your mama. He came to save your brother. He came to save your sister come to save you. If you're in here this morning and you're not saved, that's why, I thought, that's why every bit of this happened. Jesus came so that you could get saved. I want you to stand. Let's stand by our heads for prayer, please. Nobody's moving. Pianist is coming. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. Nobody's moving. It's about and eyes are closed. This big crowd of people here this morning. I don't know how many people's here this morning. Good night. I don't even know. If your heads are bowed and eyes are closed, can I ask you a question? Nobody's moving. Out of reverence and respect to God. I want to ask you a question. Are you right with God this morning? Are you? Are you right with God? We're not. We're not going to tarry long, but I would like to give you an opportunity to come and make things right with God. You say here this morning, say, Preacher, I'm here this morning and I needed that. I need help. I need help from the Lord, Preacher. Please pray for me. Would you let us pray for you this morning by just slipping up your hand? Raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hands all over the building. Thank you. Thank you. You you may put your hands down. My, my goodness, y'all. Hands all over them. That's why we have big days like this. And I want to ask you that raised your hand. Why don't you just slide right out of your seat. Make your way down here. Let's come down here and pray this morning. Come on. Come on, just get out of your seat and come on right now. Some's already come. Some's already in the altar. We're not, we're not going to embarrass you or nothing. We're just going to pray with you. We need some ladies. Come pray with these ladies. We need some men. Come pray with these men. Come on, come on. If you, lay, if you raised your hand, you need prayer. Come on, come on. Let's get this thing settled this morning. Amen, amen. Others are coming. Ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Come on, young lady. Come on, young man. Come on, amen. Somebody come and pray for these folks coming over here. Amen. Some of you ladies, men. Is there a lady that can pray for this lady over here? Man, over here. Amen. Thank you. 
others are coming. Why don't you just come right out of your seat this morning? Why don't you just make yourself at home and just come right up here and get your heart right with God this morning? Gentlemen, men, somebody come pray. Thank you. Amen. 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 Somebody else? You know what? This will be the greatest Christmas gift you've ever got. Eternal life. Lord in mercy, what a gift. Wouldn't it be something to get saved on Christmas Day? <laughs> I've known a few. You come right now. Get saved on Christmas Eve. Get saved on Christmas Eve. Come on. Come on right now. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. Amen. You come on right now. Let the Lord help you right now. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. We'll wait just a few seconds while these are still praying. Amen. That's what we've been praying for. That's why we have special days like this. Get people to the Lord. Amen. 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 Others, others, others need to come. Amen. Amen, y'all. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. All right, you can look up this way. Amen. Don't leave this morning. Don't leave if you don't know where you're going when you die. Don't leave. Amen. Amen. All right. All right.